Hey guys, it's Jason here and welcome to another video. Um, as you can see, we've got the uh, beautiful Pit Dog Hydro Body off of the X-Max. And that is because over here, we are getting ready to do the um, last of the Proline Reservoirs, the Reservoir Shocks, and actually the uh, larger uh, shock shafts as well. I've got both. Um, over here behind me is three of them already done. I not doing an actual installation video guys because proline does a terrific job of that it's actually right here because i've been kind of referring to it multiple times um they do a really really good job what i am going to do though guys i, I wasn't going to even do a video at all i was going to just kind of show you guys later on uh, when i'm doing something else how the shocks look but there was a few things i came across when making the shocks that i thought you know if you happen to watch the proline video um, and then you watch this one. There's a few things I'm just going to be kind of clear up because I actually made a mistake, not a, you know, a redo mistake or anything like that, but just kind of was like, wow, why is it like this? This doesn't make any sense. And then realizing after about the second time I watched the Proline video, I went, oh, that's what they mean. And then something else, guys, actually regarding one of the O-rings. Anyways, guys, I'm going to show you what I mean right now. All right, guys, I've pretty much gone ahead and disassembled the shock, the stock shock, um, when you get the reservoir, the only thing pretty much, this kind of comes, I want to say together. It's not really together. It's just kind of hand, you know, screwed in type thing. So you remove it, you remove this guy here from here. What you have to do is you drop your O-rings in, then you can screw this guy in. And basically you guys, this brings me to one part of the video. Um, when I mentioned earlier that I said I was going to kind of give you guys points. So I am not using the Proline shock body i actually want to use the red one um i'm gonna clean that up while i'm talking to you guys um i wanted to use the red one i honestly i like the red and black look um so for me i didn't really want to use the silver one and what i noticed i'm just gonna clean this up guys don't make fun of my purple toothbrush um was that this o-ring right here I don't know if the Proline, and I wouldn't think it would be because the threads and stuff all fit. Um, I don't know if the Proline body is bigger, but I could not, no matter how many times I tried, get this cartridge to go in without totally mucking up the O-ring. Um, you could just, it would go in on one side and then the minute I turn a little bit, I could see on the other side, it would start to kind of bubble up. I could not get it to seat whatsoever. No matter how many times I tried, um, if other people out there have had better luck, hey, awesome. I did not. So what I did was I just removed the, the stock O-ring from basically the stock cartridge and I brought it over to this one and then I had no problems. You can, it's very easy to see that this O-ring is a little bit smaller. Um, I did cycle the shocks a few times and I did not notice um, any, any leakage and anything like that. So here's hoping that that does not happen um because obviously i mean proline wouldn't would include proline would include that size o-ring for a reason um but like i said i did it's on the other one it's on the other three and i i cycled them a ton of times i did not notice any oil um coming out of it at all so yeah guys that's the only thing i noticed if you're using these cartridges um which are the larger sh uh, shock shafts um and you are using the Traxxas shock body, um, hey, if you can get that to seat with that O-ring properly, awesome. I could not. And like I said, guys, it was all, when I would try to screw it in, um, it would be, it was all kind of bulging out on one side. It was not cool. Anyways, guys, that, um, I guess really that guy should be, well, yeah, I guess that really should have been point number two because point number one is what I'm going to get to right now. All right, guys, so this is point, should have been point number one, even though technically in the video it's coming up as point number two. Um, I only say that because you'd be doing this part last. At this point now, you've got to fill up basically the reservoir and the shock. Now, watching the video, and if you watch the video, and I guess if you're paying complete attention, you'll do it right. So you start off by filling up the reservoir, and they want you to fill it up to the basically the top of the sh shocks. Oh, no more of this one. This one's going to get too much air enough um yeah you want to get it up basically to the um right to the bottom of the shock sh or the shock thread sorry like the threads inside the reservoir and obviously as you do that um 
it's obviously guys it's gonna run over into the body i don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that in there probably not i don't think it's bright enough but the oil obviously will make its way in there and when i watched the video i took it as you know fill up this to the threads come over to this side fill up to the threads um that is not what he's saying at all what he's basically saying is you are going to fill up the fill them up so they're basically at the same level this way this way so that right now like i said this is up to basically the the start of the threads you're supposed to bring this one up to the same spot the reason is i'm going to i'm going to fill this guys filling this up and then i'll show you what i mean so guys what i've done is again i filled this up and basically what i've done is i filled the main body up so it's right around the same spot the first two times guys i did this i don't know what i was thinking i literally filled this all the way up to the bottom of the threads and this one up to the bottom of the threads so the minute you drop this little piston in which actually sits in this reservoir obviously the minute this you start putting pushing this in it's got o-rings on it so it's sealed it pushed oil up even more and i thought that was the weirdest thing and honestly guys i think it was about the second or third video where i realized how he was basically what he was saying um to to basically fill it up so that it matches this level type thing um, at this point now guys um he talks about this in the video this is just kind of my interpretation of it so when you put the the little kind of piston in it's sealed so obviously guys it'll push your oil all the way it'll push more oil into here you have this little spring which sits in here so what i'm doing and he talks about how you can either push the piston down half the way or you can push it down all of the way um i'm choosing to push it down all the way for the reason that i don't know guys if you guys can see this but as you basically push this in shock oil comes up and it's pretty much almost kind of level with the threads now um you put this little spring on it sits on there and then you've got the cap and the cap basically has a little kind of little nub on it which basically the spring will sit on top of that so that and there's by the way guys there's an o-ring that you got to put on i did that off of uh, camera when you put this on basically when you start to cycle the shock obviously this piston that's in here will go up and down um as you do that obviously the piston comes up it'll kind of compress the spring a little bit i guess the reason if you when i was pushing that piston down i pushed it all the way down i guess if you only pushed it halfway down you would end up with more oil because you obviously wouldn't have as much oil flowing into the main body so you'd have to fill this up so that i guess under a lot of compression um you know you've got that extra you've got a little bit more oil in here type thing because right now guys the piston only comes about halfway up the cap and it pretty much stops there um but you've got the spring kind of helping it go back down and then just the actual um you know the seal the way the shock is sealed just the pressure itself will will kind of suck it back down um but i'm he talks about kind of like the the longevity i guess of the spring and stuff like that obviously right now because the spring is you know it's it's not compressed at all um it's going to have a longer life where if you had done this with let's say the piston um halfway down your spring would already be a pretty good ways compressed so your spring would wear out faster um sorry about that guys that's my hot water tank uh going right now my uh i guess my wife's upstairs doing some cleaning um or not some cleaning but she's running water for something i think she's been cleaning vegetables and stuff like that um but anyways guys um that is why we do it that way um i like i said i left it all the way down um or, sorry i put the piston all the way down guys just because again i think the spring will last longer um and unless i really you know was to actually build the shock four times with the piston halfway in the middle um, I would never, I'm not going to really, really know the difference anyways. So to me, the spring will last longer and hey, we'll all be good. Um, we seal this guy up. And like I said, guys, we've already put the O-ring on. Um, there is a little screw with an O-ring, but I think actually we do that kind of last. Um, we can now top up the oil to the threads. And we can now, guys, again thread this bad boy in it's got the, the stock o-ring on it from the stock cartridge and we'll get some leaking or we should get some leaking if we don't i don't have enough oil in there 
Oh, actually, I'm getting a little bit of a... My O-ring was bumped up. I'm going to add a little bit more oil just because I should have gotten a little bit of leaking just to know that it's right full. Oh, I can see. There we go. Try this again. And again, guys, when you're screwing this down, you want to make sure that this O-ring stays... Oh, sorry, guys, I'm not even on camera. That this O-ring, guys, doesn't get pinched or else you'll pretty much wreck your O-ring. And again, this is the one from the stock uh, cartridge. So there, guys, now we're getting some leaking, which we want. Kind of makes a mess, but at least you know you're doing it right. A bugger of a time getting this O-ring down. Of course, the last one is the one that I'm having a problem with. There we go. Hope I didn't pinch it. Notice the little tiny piece just near the end um, that was kind of poking its way out a little bit. Hopefully we'll be good. Pretty much, guys, at this point, you just kind of snug it down, grab your little wrench. Obviously, you don't need to uh, completely snug it up, but you want a good seal. And we're now that far, guys. I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up a little bit. This is the little screw. Uh, I've already put the O-ring on it. It just goes in here. God, my hands are so slippery from all the oil. Which, you guys, actually, that's another note, guys. I'm just going to say, um, anytime I'm building shocks, um, even though, obviously, I didn't have to worry about building that cartridge and stuff like that, um, I always try to put a little bit of oil on your fingers, just like a dab, especially when you're handling the O-rings and stuff like that. Um, I feel that's just a better way to do things and, and you know... Again, it just keeps the 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 O rings obviously lubed up. The last thing you want to do again is is wreck a an O ring. Probably should be playing some music right now, but I'm not. Anyways, guys, there she is. Um, you know, not really, guys, too bad. Besides from the few things that I had, kind of problems I'd run into, that's, I think, pretty much were my mistakes. Um, versus, except for that O-ring thing, I don't really understand that. Um, I reread the Pro line when I was buying these. They didn't say anything about having to use their uh, main body. So why that O-ring did not fit in, guys, I don't know. Um, and then, guys, like I said, the mistake of... of uh, that I was doing with filling up the shocks and stuff like that. That's completely on me. But guys, there she is. They look wicked. Um, you know, I get, it's funny, you know, when you, obviously guys, I'm on all the groups and stuff like that. And, you know, so many people just basically talk about cost and, oh my God, they're so expensive. They're so expensive. And, you know, some people are for them. Some people are against them. But really guys, honestly, we just bought, um, depending where you are in Canada, they're like a $1,300 truck. Uh, brand new. I think they're maybe a thousand bucks in the States. You just bought a thousand dollar RC truck. So anything guys is expensive. Um, so to sit there and to say something like, you know, Oh my God, those shocks are too expensive. Um, you know, I don't, I don't buy that. They're awesome. They look cool. Um, you know, whether they, even if they, even if the guys, they don't change any performance at all, I don't care. These are going to look wicked on the truck. Um, you know, like I said earlier, guys, in one of my videos, I've ever since I saw these, you know, on the ProLine website and I saw them, you know, in videos and stuff um, that ProLine was doing, I wanted them. Um, and then these guys, the actual, um, the shock shafts, these, this whole assembly, the thicker shock shaft was um, just the shop that I, one of the shops I buy from in Sudbury, Ontario, Doc's Hobbies, they had them in stock there where I bought the Reservoir Swam uh, from. And I was just like, hey, you know what? I guess I'll take those two. Um, just so I can kind of complete the shock because guys, I, like I said, I like the red, 
To me, guys, the red looks cool. It matches the red bits on the truck. I have ordered some more red bits uh, for the truck. Um, so I wanted to keep that look. All right, guys, I went ahead and cleaned off the bench and I've got the truck up there now. And what can I say? Uh, these things, guys, look incredible. Um, you know, to me, I again, guys, I keep going back to the price because they are, they're not cheap. Uh, pretty much, guys, another thing, if you buy the main bodies, um, you get everything but springs. So you pretty much, the only thing you'd remove from your stock truck is the spring. Um, again, I wanted to use the red. I like the red and the black look. I think that looks cool. Um, obviously, guys, I've got the red turnbuckles. Um, I did order this in red. I don't know what it's called, but it's basically, it holds it's the top of the bell cranks and stuff. Um, I got this piece back here. Little cover. Um, so, you know, having those in red, turnbuckles in red, wheel nuts in red, and then still keeping the main bodies. I think that's cool. I think it'll be, you know, kind of a nice little, just give the truck some character. Um, I do want to upgrade this. Um, I know a lot of you guys are running the aluminum ones. Um, All Day RC has them, uh, which is more like a, just like a, a raw kind of aluminum color. So, you know, just silver. Um, and then Atomic makes a red one and a green one. And I forget the other colors, blue probably. Um, I'd obviously like to do the red, but I still may do the All Day RC one. I haven't decided yet, but um, yeah, guys, this truck is really coming along. Uh, my Max 6 right now is sitting in Mississauga for those in, in the States. Uh, Mississauga is kind of like our little border hub um, in Ontario. Uh, so I should hopefully have it uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday um, so I can get that in. I still have the servo to put in. Um, so the D-Hawk uh, bell cranks, they won't be here probably for another week and a half. So I won't be doing the servo um, till obviously I get those so I can kind of do it all at once. Um, and, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I sort of dreaded doing these shocks because I really hate building shocks. But they went together actually, guys, pretty well. Um, and to me, you know, again, you know, they're kind of overkill uh, for my driving and what I do. But I don't care. They were just something that when I saw, I had to have them. Anyways, guys, I'm going to put the body on and we'll see how it all kind of come, came together. All right, guys, there you have it. Um, looks awesome to me, I think, with the body and then the silver uh, side steps um, with the silver reservoirs and then the red actual main bodies. I think that just looks awesome. I think the red, the silver, and the black all kind of really looks cool together. Um, super happy with the way they look. Um, yeah. It's just, like I said, guys, you know, I mentioned, you know, I've probably rambled on about this two or three times in this video, but again, guys, these were just parts that, you know, when I, the first time I'd ever seen them, I just wanted them and I didn't do it with my first and second and third X Max. I don't even think they were out for my first or second one, but, um, with this one, I knew I had to have them and that's why I bought them right away. I pretty much had the truck and I'd already bought in the reservoirs. So, um, yeah. Anyways, guys, I'm going to take the truck out for a couple of picks. They're going to... Obviously, if you guys have watched the Trencher video, these aren't going to be much different because the only thing that's really changed is the uh, reservoirs. What we do here is go back, 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 back.